God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things he has done and he is doing. And we all can say hallelujah. Thank you, our heavenly father. To our officers, to our ministers, to all of our mothers, and to each of you, our father's children, my brothers and my sisters. Let's open in prayer. Our Father and our God, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We lift you up because of who you are. Truly, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of all of our attentions, and you are worthy of all of our affections. You deserve our highest praise. Thank you for being God to us. Thank you for being all that we've ever needed. We pray now that you will enter into our session, that you will speak to me and through me. Make hearts receptive to your word that, Father, we'll leave from here better able to carry out your work in this wayward world. Bless us to stand and stand firm, unafraid and unashamed, to testify of your goodness and of your power. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the lesson tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, welcome. Welcome one and all. You that are on conference call, you that are on Zoom, you that are on uh, uh, Facebook, we pray that you will send a notification out that we are online. Send out a watch party. Get your people involved in Bible study on tonight. I'm learning uh, more and more our need that we'll get grounded on the word. We'll be not not ashamed and we'll be not uh, uh, afraid to still call sin, sin. It's, it's one thing to have Bible study just to keep people at church, but the truth is the truth needs to be expressed so that people not only will stay at church, but that people will have church in them no matter where they are. Bible study is designed to uh, make us better, to, to edify us, so that we'll live more sanctified lives. Amen, amen. It's important that we understand that, especially in this time uh, period that we're living in, things are moving swiftly away from the truth. And people don't even know uh, the difference between uh, the, the, the word of God and, and preachers that stand up and say just anything so that they can be accepted. But I'm trying to uh, make sure that I stay on target, stay on point, stay on focus, that we'll uh, be able to train the people of God that even if I'm dead and gone, the people of God will understand that a servant of the Most High God was here and taught them the truth. And I don't, I don't ever want you to move away from what thus saith the Lord. Never try to change things for numbers. It ain't about numbers. It's all about the master. Amen. Thank you for this journey. As we observe another day in the life of faithful Abraham. Let's look at Genesis the 15th chapter, we'll begin at verse number 7, and prayerfully we'll conclude at verse number 21. All of this is confined in just the topic of God's covenant with man. God's covenant. God has made an agreement. God has made a promise that he has uh, 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 promised all by himself because no one can be equal to him. So he made a promise for man to man in spite of man. And that's good to know that even though we are unworthy and we are unfit to even uh, make a promise even to one another, but God saw that we couldn't make the highest promise, so he himself made the promise to himself in order to help man, you and I. Isn't that wonderful? Verse number seven says, 
And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, take me, take me, take me, an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst. And he laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. God is letting us know in, these, in this pericope, in this passage of scripture, that he is the initiator. God didn't wait on man. God set it all in motion. That's good news because you and I don't even know how to begin anything properly. Anything that we start, it'll always have our personal agenda. But God, he initiated this covenant when he called Abram out of Ur of the Chaldees. He says, I'm the one that brought thee out. Very good a passage of scripture that says the call of God was the hand of God that led Abram out of Ur of the Chaldees. And we remember some of the things that transpired from that journey. He lost uh, one of his own brothers. He lost, he, he lost his father. See, along the journey of life, along this walk with the master, We'll lose some time. We'll lose some loved ones. We'll, we'll have to say farewell to some of the family. But the good news is God got them in control. But just know that God brought you out. God has delivered you out. And he didn't just deliver you out. He delivered you with a purpose in mind. That's good that God didn't just set you free, but God delivered him to give him an inheritance. Oh, bless his holy name. God is the one who's blessing us. It's God himself. It's not our insight. It's not our know-how. It's not even how well we live. This was, this was Abram before he was even uh, circumcised. So Abram was still, you know, he just was raggedy. But God himself is going to bless Abram. He says, I'm going to give it to thee. He's, he's a sovereign God which says, I know someone else is in possession of the land. I know someone else is situated in the land. I know someone else is occupying the land. But I'm going to give you the land that someone is situated in, possession in, in possession of, and is occupying. I'm going to give it to you because he's sovereign. That's good news. Ain't no need of you trying to hold on to anything you got, thinking it's all of yours. God owns it all. He is sovereign. He says, I'm going to give it to you. Then I'm, gonna, I'm making a promise. Jehovah, our God, is not a man that he's going to lie. You, you know, we lie a lot of times. Don't mean to, but we lie. Many times we say we're going to start church at 1045. We lie and start at 1046, 1047. We don't mean to, but we lie so frequently that we call it even little white lies. But God is not a man that he can lie. In other words, if God told you something, you ought to count on God and believe God and trust God. And we're going to find in this passage well, you and I are going to have to learn how to wait on God. I brought you from this place. I, I, I'm going to give you, I, I, I'm, I, I, Abram said, how shall I know that I'm going to inherit this land? He's bewildered. 
He's befuddled. He does not understand. God does not give us a complete picture of what he's doing in order that he will, he will strengthen our faith in him. There, there are times that you and I have gone through circumstances and situations in all of our lives where we didn't know how we was going to make it till tomorrow. We've gone through times and periods in our lives where we thought we would have no more uh, a tissue to cry our eyes, our weeping eyes all night long when tears have lapped under our chin. But the next morning, God have already worked it out. In other words, don't worry about what God going to do. If God said it, you can count on it. He going to talk about how shall I inherit this. You talking to a sovereign God who's able to do all things. Verse number nine. And he said unto him, take did I get that one already? Take, amen. I got that one, amen. Thank you. Twelve, thank you. And when the sun was going down and a deep sleep fell upon Abram and lo, in horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. This is God saying. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So that, here we have information. We see bondage. Uh, we see darkness. We see difficulties. We see deliverance. And then we, we see in God doing something in an extraordinary way. God says, a deep sleep fell on Abram. I, I'm going to, I got to deal with Abram when the sun was going down. A deep sleep. God calls him to fall asleep like he did when Adam fell asleep. And he operated and brought out Eve. That horror of great darkness fell upon him. Listen, he was in a state of divine ecstasy. He wasn't dreaming. It was God in an extraordinary way interacting with Abram. You and I don't have to have that now. We are not, uh, we, we don't move by dreams. Don't call psychic hotline and tell him you dream this or that. Don't, don't, don't do that. You are led now by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, who lives in you, and who gives you inspiration according to the word of God. And so, thank God we are no longer in need of having direct contact with God because we move by faith and not by sight. So the great darkness came upon him. It was a darkness that could get him in a position where he could feel the holy reverence of God and be in awe of God, be, uh, uh, be awestruck by God's presence and by God's power. Holy fear prepares the soul for holy joy. When you are scared, God will wound you first which means he'll humble you and then he'll lift you. Amen. He said, you know of a surety that thou, not only darknesses, but he said there's going to be difficulties. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that's not theirs. Serve them for 400 years. This is in Genesis, the 15th chapter. We 
can think about the deliverance in Exodus when they were delivered, that after that 400-year trek, God had already showed them that the people of God are going to endure some difficult days. The suffering of Abram's seed would not be for a short time, but they'd suffer for 400 years. And that's, that's how God moves sometimes. Sometimes we suffer first and then we reign. Amen. You, Sister Williams is on the Zoom and she'll tell you she can't get healed until she had to have surgery. You, you got to go through the pain in order to enjoy the victory. A whole lot of times we spoil our kids because we won't let them hit the bottom. We won't let them hit rock bottom. We catch them before they fall. We, they need to understand there is a reality in serving the living and true God. And there is a reality in denying him as your savior. They're going to suffer. They're going to suffer. This is God telling Abram, your children are going to suffer 400 years. This was a long time, but it was a limited time. It, it, listen, there's trouble in your life. There's difficulty in your life. There's drama in your life. There's pain you're suffering. But listen, there's a curfew on what you're going through. There's a time limit. Just hold on. If you continue to hold on, God is going to bring you through. I don't know why God does what he does, but I've learned how to tell him, Lord, have your way in all that you do. He says, and that nation whom they serve, I'm going to judge them, and then they're going to come out with great substance. And if you remember reading your Bible in Exodus, you remember when the children of God came out of Egypt land, they came out with abundance of wealth. But God say after 400 years, after the difficulty, there's going to be deliverance. After the darkness, there's going to be deliverance. A hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And the reason there's going to be deliverance is because God going to judge the people who got us in bondage. The punishment of the persecutors is God who's going to punish them. You, you, you and I don't have to worry about our enemies. We need to learn how to pray for them who hate us. We need to learn how to pray for them who doing us dirty. We need to learn how to tell God, forgive them. Ask God to have mercy. Open their blinded eyes. Because God is going to bless you to come out. Whatever they're putting on you. God, God Listen. God going to make them a stepping stone. Whatever your pain is, your problem is, your, your children, your, your loved ones, your spouse, your job, your health is just a stepping stone for you to get to the next level. Just remember, God's going to judge it all. And then he says, thou shalt go to thy father. They're going to be suffering, but you're going to go to your father in peace. You'll be buried in a good old age. But the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. The, the reason we're still going through, because the ones who putting us through it have not wrenched the full potential of their grievance that they hold against God. They, it, it's getting worse for them as the day goes by. And when it gets full, God's going to judge. So, God says at the right time, enough is enough. It might be 400 years, but if he say enough is enough, it's all done. I, I know it seems like the measure of sin uh, feels gradually, and it, and it seems like some people's measurement of sin even feels slower than the people of God does. It does. But that's not our call. That's in God's hand. God is working that out. God is watching that. God is monitoring that. 
And he says, when it's full, then he will judge. Stop tripping behind of the, the prosperity of the wicked. God going to judge them. You stop beating up on people uh, uh, wondering, uh, what can you do? Wait on the Lord. Know that God got it all in control. But he told him, uh, you're going to die in a good old age. It's a good thing to die in a good old age. It's a good thing to leave here even if you're young and you're in God's hand. But if it's a good, it, but if it's a good old age, it tells you through Abraham, though he was the father of the faithful, he still got to die. I don't care how strong you are, how powerful I preach, or how, how, how much money we got, or how many times, it doesn't matter. We all going to have to leave this place. Now, now, now listen, since you're going to have to leave, why not make preparations for where you're going? Why not have your itinerary already set for? You ought to have heaven as your goal. And the only way you're going to do that is to ask Jesus to come into your life. And when you ask Jesus to come into your life, he will change your residence immediately. Or we all got to die. We all got to die. Verse 17, and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Cadmonites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Jergesites and the Jebusites. He's given them all of that land. That's God's endorsement. God is here ratifying the covenant that he had established earlier. He says, I am binding this thing permanently right now. But let's look real quick at the smoking furnace. The smoking furnace that you see in the text signifies the affliction, affliction of the seed while they are in Egypt. The burning lamp suggests the comfort in that affliction and that God has showed Abram at the same time that they are being afflicted in the furnace, they are also being comforted by the burning lamp. The light suggests deliverance out of the furnace. Their salvation was as a lamp that burned. They can always be led to where it was directing them. Such, such as when, when God spoke to uh, Moses out of the uh, a burning a bush, there was a light there that was not consumed, but that light gave him direction for the deliverance out of Egypt land. The light, the burning lamp, the light, the lamp denotes the direction of the smoke. See, God's word was their lamp. The word of God is our lamp. It's our light. It's our guide. We are led by the word of God through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Just like that word was leading Abraham, that light was shining in a dark place and showed them which direction to go. The burning lamp also denotes the direction of their enemies who kept them so long in the furnace. Now, the passing of these lamps and lights, and these, this were the, uh, the, the pieces that confirmed the covenant God made with him. That, he, that Abram might have strong consolation 
being completely persuaded that what God promised that God would bring to pass, that what God promised God would certainly bring to pass. God's covenant with man was made by a sacrifice. There had to be a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus is the great sacrifice. There was nothing that man put in to this. Just like when God himself, see the idea behind the, the pieces of meat or the bulls, the heifers and the pieces of meat and the pigeons on this side and the doves on the other side and the, and the image of, re, of walking between them, the smoking furnace and the light walking in the midst. The idea was the old agreement of the old uh, uh, Hebrew, Hebraic uh, a way of transferring property was they'd get a, a sacrifice and in order to transfer deeds, each of the parties would walk through the middle suggesting I'm giving you money as an escrow and I am receiving the money and giving you a grant deed. In other words, we are exchanging ownership. And so what God is saying is, since I can't walk through the furnace, with, through the meat with man, because man is unequal and nothing he can do to help himself, I'm walking by myself. And I'm making a promise that I'm going to save man in the end. And that's what he did with Christ Jesus. He didn't need man's part when Christ was born in Bethlehem. Mary was just a channel. Birth in Christ Jesus. He came in, born of a virgin birth, untouched. Amen. It was him who walked the dusty roads. It was him who gave his life that you and I might have eternal life. And to all of those who accept him as Lord and Savior, who, who reject their own self, reject and deny their own self, and say yes to the master, he then will save you. Isn't that wonderful? Aren't you glad that God made a promise to you, you can walk on that promise. You can live on that promise. You can lift your head up because of that promise. I know things are difficult. Times are getting worse. Talk to Dr. Slade today, Dr. Marvin Slade, and he and I began to converse about how bad things are. And he said, Dunham, you ain't seen nothing yet. It's going to get worse. I, I'll, I'll never will forget what daddy told us when we were young ministers, that people will no longer even believe y'all after you have given them the honest truth of God. We're living in a time where men will believe everyone except the word of God. We reject the preacher. We deny the word of God. We refute the Holy Spirit. We say no to Jesus Christ. But I'm here to tell you, we need to accept Christ Jesus today. There is no time like the present time. Give your life to Jesus Christ. He's made a promise that he'll hold you throughout eternity. And if once you get in his hand, no man can pluck you out. That's a promise. So lift your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, mighty in power. The Lord, holy and righteous. Who is the king of glory? He is the king of glory. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Oh, God bless you and may God keep you. Let's have a word of prayer.
Thank you, Master, for all of your many blessings and your tender mercies. Thank you for the joy of salvation, for the promise that you have given us in Christ Jesus. We have eternal life. We might be sick. We might be on deathbed. We might have pain in our body, our pain in our heart. But God, we got your promise that we can lean and we can depend on you. Oh, give us strength now. Help us to hold on to you. And then God, when we get too weak, hold on to us. Bless us with your power. Anoint us with your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for all of your many blessings. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen and amen. We love you all. Go with God. And we'll see you on Saturday, I believe, the Congress. I better say that. Saturday, there's a Congress uh, workshop I do need you all to be part of. I'm going to be uh, presenting uh, the direction and the vision of the Congress on Saturday. So I would love to see all of you here. There will be more announcements. If the Zoom is on your uh, Facebook post right now, it'll be here at Friendship Baptist Church, and it'll be on Zoom. But I want you uh, to especially be a part of that Congress. They made me the moderator, and I want the church to help me uh, build up our convention. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We love you all. Go with peace and go in God. Good night. Bye on Zoom. Bye, Sister Seward. Bye, Sister Person. Bye, Sister William. Bye,